Today's special guest is First Lady Stephanie Pope Early of the City of God, Cleveland. Stephanie is the director of pre-trial for the City of Cleveland. She is the chair of the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority's Board of Commissioners and founder of Destiny Project Cleveland. Stephanie holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from the University of Akron and a Master's degree in Legal Studies from Cleveland Marshall School of Law. She's also a blogger. Help us welcome today First Lady Stephanie Pope Early. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me to um, participate and to kick off your Women's Month series. I am really excited for the opportunity. I want to give a special shout out to your fat pastor and your first lady um, for inviting me to share in this moment with you all today. Um, as many of you know, they hold a special place in my heart, so I thank them for that. Um, also, thank you for my City of God family that may be tuned in here today. Thank you for continuing to encourage and uplift me um, in every area of my life. Uh, we're getting ready to kick off this Women's History Month, and I just thought that it was very um, befitting that we celebrate women, um, and that we not just celebrate women today or this month, but that we continue to celebrate women every day. Um, as we get ready to start with the word, I believe that God has given me a message for you today. Um, and the word is entitled, God Will Provide. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Kings 17, uh, verses 8 through 16. 1 Kings 17, verses 8 through 16. And the scripture reads, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath and then he came to the town gate. A widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As he was going to get it, he called again and he said, Please. Bring me a piece of bread. Verse 12, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Verse 13, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. Verse 14, for this is what the Lord thy God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. And lastly, in verse 15, she went away and, sh and said to Elijah and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah, the woman, and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, dear God. We thank you uh, for another opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, we ask that the words that are released in this atmosphere, dear God, that they are edifying to our hearts, our minds, and our spirit. As for me, God, I just ask that you remove any nerves, that you continue to speak through me, dear God, in a way that blesses the hearts, minds, and spirits of your people. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. I want to speak to you today um, based on the theme that you have for your year, I am empowered to endure. Uh, enduring is to go through something. Enduring is to experience something, uh, to put up with something, or as the definition says, to suffer patiently. 
Uh, I like the patiently part because it says to me that there is an expectation that your situation or the circumstance that you're experiencing is not going to last forever. Uh, we know that patience is a virtue and we use that saying to speak to someone's ability to wait uh, in the right spirit and the right mind. But what happens when we're waiting for something and the waiting speaks to your circumstances more than your faith? I want to take a moment to speak to those of you that have been waiting for a season to change, uh, for those that are waiting for an opportunity to present itself that will cause a shift in your situation. Uh, for those of you that may be waiting for God to manifest some things in your life, in your marriage, in your finances, in your health, in your family. But before we get to the text, I want to paint a picture for you today about the widow that we are speaking about in our story. I would have to imagine that before Elijah appeared that this woman had found herself to be in a predicament. Uh, she had found herself in a situation. She must have felt burdened to a certain degree, maybe a little overwhelmed or stressed out. Um, she may have been a little hopeless and felt a little discouraged. I would imagine that she had probably cried out to God to change her situation. But at some point, she settled on the reality of her circumstance and not her faith. Uh, what happens when you are patiently waiting, but your situation does not change? Uh, she had a child that she was caring for, and the scripture says that she was a widow. So we know that our sole responsibility was to take care of her son. I can imagine that she had scraped and borrowed everything that she could to make ends meet. Uh, I can imagine that she had held on to, as long as she could, everything of value so that she could provide not only for herself, but for her son. But what happens when you have done everything that you can and the reality of your situation has overcome you and all you can think about is how you're going to provide for you and your child until you take your last breath? I want to speak to some people that are viewing today that are in a situation and you can relate to this woman. Uh, we're living in a pandemic that has officially lasted a year. A year of unemployment for some and a year of loss after loss for others. A year of lost hope, of lost expectations, a year of lost faith. And some of us are living in a season where we have been patiently enduring situations after situations and circumstances after circumstances that don't align with the promises that we believe God has for our life. What do you do when you have been hoping and praying and instead of God sending provision in the way that you expect it, he sends people to chip away at the little bit that you have left? I'm barely making it, but everybody is asking for something. I'm, I'm trying to work on my faith in this season, but people are asking me to believe for them for something that seems impossible. What do you do? What do you do when you are in a season of a drought and you are waiting on God for a miracle? I have a word for you today, and that word is that God will provide. I know that sounds a little cliche, but if you can relate, the text speaks exactly to where you are today. There's three things that I want to point out, and I just want to set a pin on before we jump into the text. The three things that I want you to consider is number one, God provides, so it is provision. Uh, the second thing that I want you to consider is your sacrifice. And lastly, the third thing that I want you to consider is obedience. The first point that I have for you today is that God will provide just enough. Uh, God's provision, the biblical definition, is the act of providing or making previous preparation. 
Uh, when you put your faith in Christ, God commissions himself to protect, to provide, and to care for you. Uh, before we get to the scripture in verse 8, I want to go back to the beginning of the chapter. The beginning of the chapter talks about God telling Elijah that there was going to be a drought. In verse 1, it says, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except by my word. Uh, he instructed Elijah to go and hide out at the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan River. He instructed Elijah that he could drink from the brook and that he would command the ravens to supply him with food in the morning and food in the evening. And I wanted to go back to the beginning of the chapter to set the tone of where we are in the text today. Because I started to think about the scripture and the fact that the raven was going to be the vessel or the vehicle to provide him with nourishment. Uh, because many times we miss out on the blessings of God and the message from God because we don't like the messenger. Uh, why would God send a raven to provide him with nourishment? Uh, generally speaking, we know ravens are scavengers. We think of ravens as being unclean. We think of them as being birds that pick on the leftover and the things that we would despise. Uh, the scripture even tells us in Deuteronomy 14 that when God listed the list of uh, birds that the Israelites were not to feast on, the ravens were on the do not feast list. <laughs> uh, we know that they, they are known to feast on garbage and rodents and things that we would not consider. So why then would God supply something that is necessary for your survival by way of something that does not align with your expectation? God often sends unsightly things and people in situations that we perceive to be bad timing to show you that he can supply whatever you need in whatever manner he so chooses. Uh, the scripture in 1 Corinthians 1 and 28 sums it up very well. It says that God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are. God will provide just enough, uh, and he will do it in the way that he chooses by way of the vehicle that he decides. So I don't want you to get caught up in thinking that God's provision is based upon your expectation, uh, because we can miss the move of God because it's not packaged the way that we think that it should be packaged, but God will provide just enough. I want to add a point right here, and the scripture says that God commanded the ravens to supply the food in the morning and the evening. He didn't provide them for food for the entire month. He didn't provide him food for the whole week. He didn't provide him food um, outside of anything that was fancy or anything that, was, um, that we would expect. But he commanded an unclean bird to provide food and bread that many of us would have discounted, dismissed, and despised. He will provide just enough. When the brook dried up, the scripture says that it didn't mean that Elijah was going to be a product of the drought. It didn't mean that God was not faithful to Elijah. It didn't mean that God would not provide. The brook dried up because it was time for Elijah to move. The second point that I have today is that God's provision goes before you. Isaiah 45 and 2 says, I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. I want to speak to some people or maybe even myself that are experiencing some things in your life and you don't know, understand God's timing. I want to tell you that this provision goes before you. So maybe the timing isn't right because the proper preparation has not been made for you to experience what God has for you in due season. Uh, verse 9, it says that God told Elijah, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon, and there I have directed a widow to supply you with food. God's provision goes before you. God had already made preparations for Elijah before the brook dried up. 
Uh, this is interesting to me because this is the second time that God had already made preparations for Elijah. First, it was the ravens at the brook, and now it is the widow at in uh, Zarephath. But God had made these preparations for Elijah before he even got to the place that God instructed him to go. Uh, he instructed him to go see a widow, the widow that's barely making it, the widow that's on her last, the widow who is preparing for the end because she does not have enough. Uh, the revelation that God showed me is that his provision that goes before you is not just for you. Uh, he instructed a woman that had nothing during her time of need to provide something for someone in need so that ultimately it will sustain her situation. Uh, God's provision is not just for you. Uh, the process of provision starts when we offer what we have. Uh, when the prophet came and asked for water, the widow could oblige. Uh, but it wasn't until he asked for something that she needed to survive that she hesitated. I can imagine that this is where the widow almost missed her blessing. Amen, somebody. Uh, because in verse 12, it says, As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I do not have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering some sticks to take home to make a meal for my son that we may eat it and die. The widow is a good example of how we make our own plans even in the midst of God's promise. See, the process of provision starts when you offer what you have. Uh, if you do your part, God will sustain you. If you are faithful and obedient, God will provide. He will meet you right where you are, but the key words are if and sacrifice. In verse 13, it says, Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make, take a small loaf of bread for me and what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. The third point that I have for you today is that God's provision follows belief. On this journey, God is calling his people to walk by faith and in his promises. Uh, for a second, I would have to imagine that her focus was on the drought and on her situation. The focus may have been on her circumstances and not her faith. We know she heard God because of his instruction to Elijah. Uh, in verse 9, God told Elijah, I have directed a widow to supply you with food. So the issue was not in her hearing God, but the issue was in her trusting God. And see, many of us are going through seasons in our life where we're hearing God, but the issue is that we have a challenge in trusting and believing that there will be a manifestation of the things that God has already spoken in our life. Uh, we got control issues. We, we have some issues in dealing with things that are out of our control. And that is the problem that I believe that the woman may have encountered in this moment. Uh, hearing God, hearing God, the Bible definition says it involves physical hearing that inspires the hearer and a belief or trust that in turn motivates the hearer to act. Hearing God not only involves a physical hearing, um, but it is the ability to act on what you have heard. Uh, that sounds like something that reminds me of faith, amen? It's not that we don't hear God, it's just that we don't act on what we've heard. And sometimes we handicap ourselves because we're not obedient to what God has instructed us because we are trusting the process that he has placed before us. Uh, we have to be obedient because God's provision follows belief. That's why you have to be careful to not get weary in your suffering, but to be able to endure or patiently wait on God and the promises he has spoken over your life. Uh, God is a provider of what you need and not necessarily what you want. Uh, God provides 
is usually necessary for your purpose. What he provides is usually necessary for your assignment that you have on your life. What he provides is usually necessary to sustain you while you're in the season that you're in, whether or not he delivers you out of that season or not. Many of us Many of us are in situations right now and they don't align with what our expectations are and they don't align with what we think we should have or how we think we should be living. I have to tell you that God will provide exactly what you need in every season of your life. God's provision, his provision is generally different than what we expect. Uh, we make our own plans, even in the midst of God's promise, uh, because we think it's supposed to look a certain kind of way, or we think it's supposed to feel a certain kind of way. Uh, but God can provide and sustain you without changing the condition of your season. Uh, that's why you have to be empowered to endure. There are going to be some situations and circumstances that we experience in our life. Uh, there will be some seasons of lack and some seasons of uncertainty and some seasons of loss, but we have to be able to endure the seasons so that we can not only be blessed, but that we can be a blessing to others. Uh, when we are blessed, it overflows. And this is a good uh, uh, example of that in the text today, that there is an overflow that comes by your obedience. Uh, out of our obedience is someone else's provision. Out of our sacrifice is someone else's blessing. So some of us are experiencing a drought in this season right now. And it's difficult to think about other people when you're going through the very thing that you are trying to get over yourself. Uh, we are in a prolonged absence of something we are believing God for. But many of us are going through droughts in our life, a season where we are lacking a specific thing. These droughts cause us to question God. These droughts cause us to doubt. And I'm not talking to the sanctified people that may be listening here today. I'm talking to the people that can relate to the widow that's in the text. Um, but I want to empower you today um, in the scripture. The scripture in verse 16 says, For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord. See, that's the place that you want to shout no matter where you are, whether you're driving in your car or whether you're sitting in your living room, because even in the midst of drought, even in the midst of lack, even in the midst of giving your last, God's word does not return void, but it accomplishes everything that he has purpose under the heaven. How many believers do we have in the house that know that no matter the circumstance, that God is still a provider? Uh, no matter the struggle, God got me. He got me. No matter what it is that I need, God is a sustainer. Whatever I need, God is. In my lonely places, God is love. When I start to experience anxiety and have these emotional thoughts and I don't know how to bring myself back, God says, I am your peace. When I feel weak in my body and I don't really know what to do, God says that I am your strength. When I feel like sickness has overtaken me and the doctors are just all over the place and I don't want to believe, God says, I am your healer. When I start to question my path and God says, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. So I know that I don't have to have it all figured out on my own. When I am afraid and fearful of the places that God has positioned me in this season of my life, God says, fear not, I am your shield. I will go before you and make provisions for you. When I start to beat myself up and question the decisions and the mistakes that I've made in my life, I know that God says, I am your redemption. Uh, when I get weary in my calling and begin to question my qualifications, am I good enough? Am I worthy enough? God says, I am. God is everything that you need. I am everything. The scripture tells us that the drought lasted for three and a half years. The drought lasted for three and a half years, but the widow, her son, and Elijah had everything that they needed to withstand the drought because God is a provider, and out of your obedience and sacrifice, we can experience the fullness of God. 
So I'm here to encourage you today that I am empowered to endure because I know my God will provide. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this word, dear God. Lord, we thank you for the reassurance that you are our provider, dear God, that you are our sustainer, dear God, that everything that we need in this season of our lives, dear God, that you will provide. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the word that has gone out, let it not fall on deaf ears, dear God, but let it be pierced into our spirits, oh God, uh, so that not only we can speak, dear God, but we can walk in faith, understanding and believing in your word that has gone forth over our lives, oh God. Thank you, dear God, for giving us the spirit and the power to endure. Uh, situations are not always easy. Circumstances are not always easy. Sometimes there are struggle, dear God, but we know that your word does not return to you void, but it accomplishes everything that you have purpose under the heavens. So dear God, we just ask that you bless each and every person that is under the sound of my voice, dear God, that as this word has gone forth, that you keep them, that you bless them, and that you touch them. And all these things we ask in your mighty name we pray. Amen.